Well, our next guest is one of the most powerful people in the world of advertising. Yes. And when he's not shaping images, he's running his liquor company okay. and writing columns for the New York Observer. Okay. He just does not stop working. And, yeah, <laughs> and today he's here to discuss his juicy new book, Isn't That Rich? Mm. Life Among the One Percent. Richard Kirschenbaum, welcome to Arise 360. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. We're so excited to have you back. This mm -hmm. book is so juicy. Oh, I can't it, stop reading it. it. I'm like, every chance I get, I'm I like, another page. Shannon, <laughs> it will be the read of the summer. Thank you. What made you decide to share how the 1% really lives? Mm -hmm. Because it's a little crazy on the Upper East Side. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, I was living there. And um, someone asked me to do a column, and I said, you know, the, an advertising column. And I said, I don't know if I really want to do an advertising column. So I wrote a column, and it did it just, like, exploded, and everyone got really mad at me. Really? <laughs> yes. So there was a bit of a backlash. There was a backlash. Now, why is that? Because the Park Avenue Primates is a new book about the Upper yes. East Side. Why do people not like being written about in, when you're in the 1%? What's that about? I think when you hold a mirror up to these people, yeah. you know, um, they, some people think it's great and they think that it's really funny and some people see themselves and they get upset, mm. you know, so it's the, the, tr the truth hurts. The truth well, do hurts. a lot of your friends get upset? Because you start off a lot of your stories like, well, we got invited to this event and this is what happened <laughs> uh -huh. and we went here yeah. and this is what happened. Like, he's using us as material. <laughs> well, so, some people really enjoy, you know, being in the book and they actually pitch me now to be in the book. They really, <laughs> or the column, they actually want to do it. Um, and then, um, so after uh, the initial column, um, broke, which was called Drivers Are the New Dads, about mm -hmm. people outsourcing parenting mm -hmm. to their drivers. Uh, a lot of people stayed away from me, or, you know, but so, now people are into it. Well, really? a lot of people are into it because yeah. we cannot stop turning these yes. pages. Why are we so obsessed with how the 1% spend their money? Exactly. I think because it's really crazy town. I mean, I'm, I'm not joking, like, you know, duplex closets and, you know, mm -hmm. people who, like, you know, bring their like dogs to therapy and crazy stuff like that. I mean, I'm seriously like you cannot believe what goes on and it's all true. And you know, a lot of these people are documenting their stories on Instagram now. That's and right. it, you have a, a phrase in the book that I love. It's called the wealthy. <laughs> Explain what a wealthy is for people who don't right. know. Well, you know, there's the selfie, right? Right. Mm -hmm. But if you're like parking yourself in front of your jet or your Bentley, so you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, then it's a wealthy. Yeah. <laughs> so is that a wealthy? A hundred percent. That's actually an ad though for real. <laughs> Uh, you know what I'm saying? Be a great but it up. is technically wealthy. <laughs> yeah, it's well, a good ad. You, you yeah. look good there. Oh, that yeah. hair, thank man. You, you got to start a hair line. <laughs> right? You really yeah, I'm do. just glad I still have it. You yeah, know what I'm saying? it looks good. But you know, it isn't all good times for the mm -hmm. 1%. Rich people have problems too. Aww. Well, they do. You know, there's this whole idea of anxiety and, you know, there's a term called relative deprivation, which means that you are, they think they're relatively deprived to the person who has more. And of course, you know, we all say <clears throat> boo hoo hoo, but these people, you know, they actually, you know, they're popping the Xanax and doing, mm -hmm. you know, drinking a little bit more than the average person. So the person know? who only has 10 million feels <laughs> like he's on welfare standing next to the person who has 100 million. For some of these people, you know, but, you know, I do want to say one thing about a lot which of people. Which is friends, ridiculous. Which mm -hmm. is ridiculous. Right. But I will tell you, you that, and I wrote an article recently for the New York Post uh, defending the 1%, you know, you cannot believe the charity and the philanthropy that is really done on the, on the Upper East Side. I mean, right. truthfully, people are incredibly generous, and they are really philanthropic, and they do care about other people's kids. They do. You yeah. Know? Oh, but, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, yeah, back yeah. to the... No, no, no. <laughs> no, when I read that article, and it right. was great, and one of the things that I thought really stood out about that article is just yeah. how, how much the rich people have have done to help New York be the fabulous city that it is today. It's Cleaning true. up Central Park, contributing to all these major art institutions, all that they do is mm. is definitely makes the Big Apple. They're writing the big, the big checks. And you know, They're the truth the is checks. that, if, as I have friends said, someone who's really has the money said, if I'm writing a $75 million check and my name's on the check, I certainly don't mind if it's on the side of a building. Oh, oh there you go. Oh, you know, right, yeah. well, so. You say in your book that a lot of people are also writing checks to their friends. Talk to us about buying these friends. Yeah. How does that work exactly? Well, it's not untrue. I call it, there's a chapter in the book called Paid Friends. Mm -hmm. And it is not untrue that these people have paid friends, you know, that, you know, the, the hairdresser, the stylist, the interior mm. decorator, you know, mm. they sort of surround themselves with people who tell them they look great and how wonderful they are yeah. and, you know, laugh at all their jokes. And I have a lot of friends who have paid friends. And they will, they, it's not untrue that they really do have paid friends. Oh, wow. Oh, you know. So sad. Yeah, especially for some of the men that really don't have time because they're running these empires. Mm. They like 
to have people sort of, you know, throw the tennis game or that kind of thing. I mean, now, you'd be surprised. Have, do these men have paid friends or paid friends? They also have paid <laughs> friends. <laughs> you know oh, do they I have mean? a lot of paid friends? Yeah, you like know what I'm Elliot Spitzer's paid friends, <laughs> oh, like that? They, they, have, they have some paid friends. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? I'm privy to some of the paid friends. Uh -huh. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, do they have yeah. any real That's friends, your, yeah. though? Is it all about the money? Do they have real friends? Because, you know, at some point, it could just be about the green. Well, you know, I have to say, because I really believe that um, I choose my friends really carefully. And uh, I, the, some of the people that I know that I'm really friendly with, and I do have real friends, I th are great people. And, and so again, you know, we, I really look at it as a great divide. Who are the people that really are, um, you know, have integrity and authenticity? And then you have the people that truly are ridiculous, and they really do have paid friends. Now, I mean, I'm not going to lie to it. Now, really quickly, Richard, you made your money yes, in advertising. I certainly did. But you also have a liquor company as well. Yes, I with do. With Mr. Blackwell, Chris, Chris Blackwell. Chris Blackwell, yes. the most, world's most interesting man in Jamaica. Yes. He's, and you also write your column for the New York Observer. That's true. And you also write relationship books. Yes. Is there any other wealth source that you have that we should know about? <laughs> well, I mean, I do have a company called NSG SWAT, which is my new branding company. Okay. And I own, because of that, we earn equity in new emerging brands. So, uh, so that's part of how I earn my living. And I would say that I am a workaholic, okay. although I'm a balanced workaholic, okay. meaning that I do like to have fun too. So when you're not working, how does the 1% spend their summers? Like is the Hamptons and the Vineyards still the hot spot? Um, they are, but then I wrote a column in the book called The Emptons, which you have this grand estate, and then you go off to Saint Tropez, or you go to, you know, mm -hmm. which is, I'm going there in a couple weeks, um, Capri, <laughs> of you know. Course. Sure. <laughs> you know, but you see, I have I have a good sense of humor about it. But uh -huh. the truth of the matter is that people do, they really do go to those places, and you know. Well, if you want to pay us to go with you, we'll be your uh, paying friends. I will have a party soon. Trust me. <laughs> there you go. Right. Oh, Sancho so Pay, much. here we come. Yes, Richard and take Kershaw. this book with you. Yes. Thank it's you a great so much. Read available wherever books are sold. Right. Thank you. All right. You're well, watching Arise Entertainment 360, and we'll be right back. Richard.